Best sports traditions, all sports, any sports, whatever you got, what do you got? Well, I don't even like, I'm not a huge fan of this sport, but I think this tradition is like awesome. I got to go with the day with the Stanley Cup, right? I, I mean, the, the day with like you get to bring home the Stanley Cup and have it in your house and have family over and party and drink out of it and do whatever, right? I think that is one of the cooler things in all of professional sports, how each member of the team gets a, an allotted amount of time with it and you get to enjoy it and do all of that. Uh, I, I love that aspect there. Some of the stories over the years, though, of the desecration of the cup, like it gets bent, it's in a pool. Yes. Like, right. I mean, come yeah. on, let's let's show respect some respect for bit. this right. iconic sports trophy. I'm going to stick with hockey because this is the first sports tradition I ever became aware of, and it still kind of is cemented into my psyche. Yeah. The throwing of hats onto the ice after a hat trick. And it's like, I remember thinking, those hats those hats aren't cheap. You're just giving your hat away? What happens to all the hats? What do they do with all the hats? Do they get their hats back? So I just always thought that was such a neat thing when the guy gets the third goal and off go the hats. You better be willing to give up that hat for good. And hats ain't cheap. But I just remember seeing that when I was a kid. And you could imagine, I wasn't much different at age seven than I am now sitting there worrying about all the things about retrieving the hat and why would you throw away a perfectly good hat? It's a moment that passes. The hat lasts forever. Anyway, I, I like well, that. The hat's better than when they throw probably they throw my fish on the, the ice. That that one I'll, I'll go. I mean, damn, we're just gonna, octopus. We're just going to waste animals and food and just throw it on the ice for a hockey game. That one is always, I'm like, what? The Screw your hat. That's the that damn thing. might was, eat it. Uh, yeah, what? They still might eat it. I Weren't doubt it. Catfish. Weren't they putting catfish on the ice in Nashville? I think they I do octopus right. or octopi right. in Detroit for some reason. All right, what else you got? Well, I, I got to go where you know it hits hits home with me a little bit. The Gatorade bath. Yeah, the Gatorade bath is one of the coolest things in all of sports, and and of course it was kind of invented by the 1986 New York Football Giants. So it's got a special place in my heart right there. Right. They were the team that kind of glorified it and made it a thing. Second week of the NFL season that year, it started with Harry Carson hiding in the sidelines, trying to get Bill Parcells, Mr. Strict, angry, tough guy. I'm Bill Belichick. It was their way to like, hey, loosen up. Hey, cool off a little bit. We won the game. Right. And it became a thing. So the Gatorade bath, great tradition. I still love it. And we, damn, we're betting on it for the Super Bowl this day and age. There it is. That's the With second inside one. inside information. There, <laughs> yeah. was, there was some suspicious oh. betting activity because somebody knows the color of the Gatorade right. ahead of time and somebody wagered accordingly. So that may be something that is not available in future Super Bowls. Th this is something that doesn't happen all that often anymore if it happens at all because it creates very real safety risks. But, but. There was nothing like the scene, typically at a college football game, when they take down the goalposts and carry them away. And again, it's very unsafe. And I remember when we used to go to the West Virginia games, they had some contraption where after a big win, like down come the goalposts right away and there's nothing to take. And they're guarded by state police. So the hooligans out there running around on the field can't take it. But just those, those images of the goalpost coming down, the goalpost being carried away, being sawed up and you know, distributed to whoever that I, I kind of like it, even though I don't condone it. It's very unsafe. Don't do it anymore. But I do enjoy my memories of seeing goalposts torn down when I was a kid. Yeah, it, it's it's still cool. It, it is. I mean, even when I was in college, I remember once we went to Baylor and we were going, we went to the walkthrough at the stadium the day before and they had put like gel all over the goalpost. Like they were going to upset us. They were expecting to upset us. So they did that so they couldn't tear it down well i don't maybe, know maybe maybe mac brown's the one who put the gel on either the way it, 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 it led to a it led to an ass whooping of the baylor bears that's what it did <laughs> lead to. i can tell you that much <laughs> um all right i'm staying i'm staying at home i'm staying with the 86 giants i'm sorry i know where you're going you know, i know where you're going i mean literally. When, when the when your damn family member is the first person to start this tradition i feel like it's my right to to take this in the draft I'm going to Disney World. I mean, AKA the big effers, first lines ever on national TV, right? He was the first guy to ever do it. I'm going to Disney World. I'm going to Disneyland. 
Uh, yeah, that's a pretty pretty cool thing that my dad was a part of, and uh, I gotta I gotta take that one. I've said before, your brother Matt looks just like him. That is your brother Matt. That's not Phil. It is. That's your brother. Yes. My God, unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable. By the way, they did the I'm going to Disney World thing with Dawn Staley from South Carolina last week, and I think she was so kind of overcome in the moment when Holly Rose set her up for the line. It took a half second to register what she was supposed to say. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which makes sense because it's ESPN, ABC, and Disney World. It's all one big happy family. But it did take her about a half second to remember, oh, yeah, that's my cue yeah. <laughs> to say I'm going to Disney World. All right. Uh, uh, I don't know. I guess i got to go Terrible Towel. i got one here somewhere. Oh, Terrible do you? Towel really is awesome. Yeah. yeah I've, you know I've got a couple of them floating around we here. We know. But uh, the Myron Cope invention – there's no real reason for it. There's no connection to Pittsburgh Steelers. It's he had this idea. Let's wave a towel around. I remember, and it might have been something that was lifted from the Dolphins because this was before your time. But they used to wave like white hankies. Yeah, and it looked weird. Right. Like, like because that back in the day, like men used to carry around this disgusting cloth that they would blow their noses and, and spit then put it to, back in their pocket. Put back in their pocket. Disgusting. <laughs> and, and, and disgusting. My dad had one, and I just remember when I first time I saw it. It's like, well, now what do you do with that? Yeah. You're it, wait, you put it back, <laughs> and you're gonna okay. and you're gonna touch it again later and do that same thing <laughs> again. <laughs> um, but maybe maybe Myron Cope decided to go next level with the terrible towel. But the terrible towel is awesome. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.